Hey, it's time for another video. We're in the middle of a web application development tutorial using Firebase. And so far we've built a, a login form and a form to add what we call heroes to our database. The goal of this video is to activate the top button called sign in. So if they've already created an email address and password, they don't have to create a new one every time they come and visit us. So we're going to change one thing in our code first of all. This uh, event listener and the sign in function are actually misnamed. They say sign in, but we're using a function called create user. So probably a better way to name this instead of sign in is um, let's use something called um, create new user. How about so create new user and let's just test it to make sure that if renaming it causes any problems. Create new user is renamed both ways, both places, and we'll save it. And let's just double check by refreshing the page. And now I'm going to create somebody else. So random characters, and then random password, and we click create new account, and we watch our console log, and it says that this person has logged in. So we know that this is working. We're going to go back to the Google Docs on our uh, program. We are in the documentation under Firebase and we're looking at the Getting Started tab under Web. This is adding a new database. Uh, this creates a new user and then here's the next function we're going to use in this video. Sign in existing users. So the same thing happens here. We're going to take an email and password and we're going to authenticate them. However, the function is no longer create a new user, but sign in. So we can probably just copy this code and put it into our, our own project here. And let's, uh, let's add it down here below the create part. So paste it. We're going to use the same model as we did before. So there was a function that we wrapped around this and we're going to, um, let's see here, that needs to go away. Okay, so this is no longer create new user. This is now our sign in function. And so if we call this function and send it an email and password, it will log us in. Let's also take the console log and add that to our code in case there's an error. And let's go up to our um, listeners now. So we have one listener listening to the button called create new user. So we're going to use the second button, or maybe it's actually the first one on our form. The form code is listed here, the login form. And the button that we're going to program this time has the ID of sign in button. So let's copy that ID and take it down to where our button listeners live. And here is the section. So let's paste that in for now. We can probably just use this entire code here and just rename one or two things on it. So let's copy this code and paste it. The ID has to change. So let's cut that and paste it over top of this ID. So we have a new button listener. So the sign in button is clicked. And when we run this thing, we want to check the input email, input password and let's say existing user and instead of calling create user we want to create uh, we want to sign in so I'm going to copy sign in and paste it over top of there so two functions that are nearly identical one of them creates new users and one of them authenticates existing users in our database so one other nice thing would do is instead of just a console log let's do an alert and let's do uh, error message to our screen. So that way the user gets to see a pop-up if they type in their password incorrectly. So a couple of alerts. We're gonna test this and then we should be done. Okay, so let's sign in a new account. Let's say mom signs in and she's at mothers.com and her password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll create the new user. Okay, so the console log is telling me that mother at mothers.com has logged in. Now uh, we are going to create a second account. Let's say this is dad. 
and he is going to be at fathers.com and let's leave his password alone and create the new account okay so both of those are new accounts let's go check our console log under my uh, firebase console refresh the page under authentication and I should see we have mom and dad let's see is dad in here there he is now we know the password on these guys I think it was one through eight so we can use this sign in option so right now dad is signed in let's go back and sign in mother so mom at mothers.com this time instead of creating a new account I'm just going to use sign in and it says existing user and she has signed in so we can sign in either one of these people now because we remember their password and we don't have to create a new account every time we come back so you can see there's something missing in our form it's the logout button we can log new users in but the only way to sign out it looks like is to um, sign in with somebody else so let's add a new button called logout and let's uh, hook it up to some code so let's go back to our Firebase docs and look for anything under logout. We have sign in, but it doesn't appear we have anything about sign out. So let's see if we can do a search and do sign out. Uh, nothing there. Let's try log out. Log out. Okay, since they don't seem to have the right docs, we're going to go look for it under Google. So let's do a Firebase uh, logout and see what happens. So it looks like there was a stack overflow and fortunately they know as much as anyone else. Here is our command. You don't log out from the database but you log out from Firebase. So it says here copy this. Let's go back to our code and use our logout command. So we're going to need a function and um, we're going to need a button so we're going to create a button somewhere and then make it log out. I'm going to paste our log out command for right now and say, uh, well, that's obvious what it is. It's a sign out. Okay, we're going to add a button. So up here in our form, where's our form end? Looks like it's right here. So the login form starts here ends here I'm going to just create a new section for logout and let's call this thing a div and its ID is equal to logout form how how about and we're gonna put one button in so let's take an example button and paste it in here and we're gonna call this thing the logout button just to separate the forms, I'm going to put an HR, which is a horizontal rule. Let's see what that looks like. So when I go back to my page and reload, I have logout. Now it doesn't look quite what I expected. I want to have this thing uh, the same width as everybody else. What did I forget? It looks like the word container. So let's put in there a class container. one more HR rule afterwards okay so now we have a logout command that is separate from all the other forms this will probably hide and show according to if we're signed in or not so we're going to now go down to the button listeners and we're going to create something around this guy so this is a um, another jQuery command so when somebody clicks the logout button we're gonna run the function and inside there we'll just simply put firebase auth dot sign out okay what was the name of our button I have an ID here but I forgot the ID that I created just two seconds ago and it is listed right up here somewhere here it is the ID is logout button so I'm going to copy that and bring it back to our listener Okay, I'm saving. We're going to refresh the page. And now let's see what happens. We go log out. Okay, and I get a message. Firebase auth is not defined. I have a feeling I copied some code that was from an older ver version of uh, Firebase. If you notice here, 
we have a pattern of Firebase dot off with a parentheses and this is a not quite exactly the same so we should give ourselves a console log message so we know if anything happened and we'll say logged out okay one more test and then we're done here so we need to log in again so mom at mothers.com and one two three four five six seven eight so we sign in it says she signed in and log out was, fig was triggered so it looks like we've got that part figured out so that's about wrapping up for this video we're going to later add sign in with Google but before we do in that kind of thing we're going to go and actually create the actions for our new hero form so see you in the next video